Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. This video is going to be about wood turning for beginners. If you're new to this, I'm going to show you everything I know about the skew chisel and how it might be the most important tool in wood turning. Stay tuned. This is going to help you on the lathe. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you'll receive alerts when we release a new video. And anytime we use a special tool, we'll always leave a description down below. All right, let's get to work. Most of my turning is specific to furniture making. So that's going to be spindles or furniture legs or drawer knobs. I spent four years as Dale Nish's assistant at Brigham, Brigham University. And Dale, if you don't know the name, is probably one of the best known wood turners of the last 50 years. There's primarily four basic tools, skew chisel, parting tool, scraper, and a bowl gouge. And of the four, the skew chisel is probably the hardest to master. And in fact, I would say that most people don't use it properly. It's designed to shear, not to scrape. But once you learn how to do it, it's amazing what you can do with it and the finish can be almost flawless. Not that you can't get a really good finish with a, with a gouge, but I think a skew chisel tops the four of them in terms of being able to go right from the tool to maybe one grid of sandpaper and you're done. So I'm going to walk you through that entire process. The first thing we've got to do is sharpen it. So we're going to go over to the disc sander first, then I'll take you to the bench grinder and give you a couple of different options when it comes to sharpening. Now I don't know how many people are going to have the luxury of having a 16 inch disc sander in their shop, but this is the easiest way I think to to grind a, uh, a skew chisel and I've got mine set up and I'll show you exactly how I do it. I'm going to show you some other options because like I said most people probably don't have a 16 inch disc sander. This by the way is a one inch Henry Taylor. It uh, is a quarter inch thick and the bevel if you want to know is about three eighths of an inch wide so that's the ratio. Uh, I don't know how important the, that angle is. You don't want it blunt or obtuse, you want it fairly acute. But what I do with this, and it just happens to work out, is I put the end of the chisel in the groove and then just rest the bevel. Move it around a little bit so you're not wearing one spot. And then flip it over and do the other side. And it just you, enables you to maintain a nice flat bevel and I prefer a flat bevel. I don't want this to be hollow ground. Now, the result is going to be a little bit of a burr. So the easiest way to deal with that is just to get a little piece of wood. Just get a piece of wood and just work that bevel, or pardon me, that burr, back and forth until it finally comes off. And that needs to be nice and sharp, and that is. That's ready to go, and I don't need to hone it and go anything beyond that. By the way, that's a 120 grit disc on there. It's a little bit worn, so it's might be giving you a little bit better edge than that. But under the power of the lathe, that'll do just fine. But I want to take you over and show you what you can do on a bench grinder, so I'll meet you over there. Now this one is going to be a little bit harder. And by the way, I'm using a, a CBN wheel that's got abrasive on three sides. This side, this side, and the face. If I use the face, it's going to be concave or what we would call hollow ground. I don't want that. I like the way it lays nice and flat on the wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this on the tool rest, but you pretty much have to do this by eye just because of the way it approaches it. You don't want the end of your chisel to be squared off, so it's, it's skewed on an angle this way as well. So you're going to set that in there, and you just kind of have to feel your way in until you make contact with the side. And then what I'll do is, once I get it, I'll just in and off and on, off and on, just to keep it from overheating until I eventually get that, that entire surface polished. Now you notice I switched chisels as well. I don't want to ruin the one that I just did. This is a half, uh, what is this? I think it's a half inch gouge, a half inch skew chisel, yeah. It's also, a, it's a Henry Taylor. Now I'm looking down here to lay that as close to flat against the side of that stone as I can. And once you find your contact point, it's 
too easy to overheat if you just hold it there without releasing it. And that's close, but you can see one, two, three, four facets on there. I want that to be all one. I didn't say this would be easy. Let's cool that off. Now, I've got one facet. The only spot I'm missing is right there. Well, that's good enough. I'm not going to bother with it. I've got one facet on, oh, seven-eighths of that surface. Now I've got to do the same thing on the other side. That side, there's not enough grit, so I'm going to have to do it on this side. Again, you're just going to have to eyeball it, somehow reference with your fingers on the tool rest. The other thing too is you want to try to keep that even and you see I've got, I'm way off. I've got this side a lot longer than that side. I'm going to go ahead and correct that. Now you know why I like to use that 16 inch disc sander. This is a, an 80 grit CBN wheel. We'll leave a link down below. I think they're probably the best development when it comes to grinding as it pertains to woodworkers in the last while. All right, that's pretty good. Just cool that off. Now I would do the same thing with that. You've got a little bit of a burr on there. So let's take a piece of wood, in this case plywood, and just move that back and forth until that burr breaks off. Now, if you don't have either and you've got to do this strictly with hand tools, it's going to be a little more work, but this is where I would want to use a diamond plate Now, that's quite a bit of reference surface, so if you can get in there and find that. Shorter strokes are easier to control. If you do long strokes, you have a tendency to rock like that, which isn't going to do you any good. Nice thing about this, this is a, uh, a double-sided diamond stone by Trend. We'll leave a link to that as well. It's got a 300 grit side and a 1000. I'm using the 1000 side. If you had to do a lot of heavy work you could use the 300. But somehow you need to leave, you have your fingers back here to act kind of as a, a, a second contact point to help you. Now, mind you, you're wearing your fingers on a, an abrasive surface so if you do it too long you're going to start to see some red fluid on the stone. Do that until it feels sharp and hopefully you've maintained one bevel. All right, well let's go back over to the lathe and I'll show you some exercise on how to get really good with the skew chisel. All right, here's four different skew chisels. This is a one inch, this is a three quarter, this is a half inch, and this is a quarter. Now this definitely has a specific purpose for very small work. Don't use it very often. Of these three, I use this the most. I can't really tell you why other than the fact that I like having all that extra reference surface. This one doesn't get nearly as much. This one gets a little bit more, but sometimes I'll pick up whichever one of these happens to be the sharpest. If you're gonna practice, practice on a wood that's really soft, easy to turn. This is a piece of uh, northern white pine. That, basswood, even poplar. And I'm just gonna find my centers. If I could find a pen. I know I have one, there. So what that does, on one side you can find the center of a round piece and on this side you find the center of anything square. So just reference that off the two, draw your line, all you're doing is just finding your diagonals. Do both ends. Now I'm gonna take my center which is just uh, called a spur center. 
And I'm gonna put that point right on that cross section. It doesn't take much. You just wanna drive it in there enough so that it'll make some contact and make it easier for the spur center to grab the wood. I usually don't even bother pounding it in, I just squeeze it. Now, on this end, I'm gonna lock this in tight. This is a ball bearing center, so it spins freely. Just find that intersection of the two lines, and then tighten that up. You want tight enough to make it safe, so you don't want that piece flying away on you. Lock that down. Now this is my tool rest. And uh, on a large piece like this, the longer the tool rest, the better. This one I think is 12 inches long. And by the way, this is a, uh, this is a general lathe. They're no longer made, but it's a good sturdy lathe. Lots of weight. And if you're looking for a lathe to turn spindle work on, you just, the heavier it is, the more stable it's going to be, less vibration. As far as the speed, most of the inexpensive lathes have adjustable speed, but that means that you have to go in here and change pulleys. Well, this one has been modified and it has a, uh, a variable speed. So when I turn it on, I've got a dial over here that I can adjust the speed. And that's gonna come into handy when I actually show you how we do some of this. But with a small diameter piece of stock, I'm gonna go fairly fast. In fact, I'm gonna go as fast as it'll spin it. But I'm gonna put this in place first. I want my I want my uh, tool rest to be just, just around the center point. As far as height goes, lock that in. And then I want it fairly close to the wood, but it's got to be able to clear. The closer it is, the more leverage you have. I, I want this to be nice and smooth, and occasionally that gets roughed up, so you may have to go over and take a file to it or a belt sander and smooth it out. But I also like to round over the corners of my chisel. If your corners are left sharp, then they're going to dig in, and that's not very comfortable, especially as you start to get some nicks in there and they catch. But if you round those over, and you can do that with uh, probably a belt sander is the easiest way. You could also do it with a file, although these are quite hard. So we're going to turn this on full RPM. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to work from into a void, so the void being the end of the stock. So let me just get this round and then I'll come in and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing and how it works. I want to get this round, get rid of all the flats. So by resting my chisel like that I can tell when it's round. No longer any vibration. Alright, so the whole idea with a skew chisel is to get a nice shearing cut. Think of it like a hand plane almost, but you need to be able to control the depth. So the first thing you have to do, and I'm gonna slow this down in a minute and show you it so that you can actually see it in a speed you can, you can watch what's happening. But I need to rest that bevel against the wood. And then I'll rotate the chisel just enough so I start to get a bite. So there I'm, there I'm, I'm resting and then I just, Tip that chisel a little bit. And what we take off is nice, it's not dust, we're not scraping. But you can see how nice and smooth that finish is. If I was sanding that, that's pine, I might hit that with 220 for a couple of seconds and be done with it. All right, so let's turn it on. I'm gonna turn the speed way down. I can turn the air off now because it's not gonna be so dusty. Okay, first thing we need to do is to find where that bevel is. You always wanna be working on the lower half, actually probably the lower third would be even better. If you happen to get above there, that tool's gonna to dig in and bite. That's one of the reasons why you want a nice soft wood to practice with. So if it does bite, it's not quite as scary. You get a piece of hardwood and it'll grab your tool a little harder. So there I am resting the bevel. You want to, can you get the camera over from that side and actually see where the bevel, how the bevel contacts the wood? Okay, so the bevel is working on there. I'm not biting it in. And now I'm just going to, I'm gonna turn and rotate just a little bit 
until it starts to see if I can slow this down even more. Now, the bevel is still making contact and it's preventing that cutting edge from digging in any more than I'm allowing it. And just like a plane, it shears that wood off and gives you a beautiful finish. Now, I just want to contrast this real quick. If you were to take a scraping tool, which is just a, uh, this happens to be a, carb a carbide one, but you, you're literally pressing the wood, or the tool against the wood, and you're scraping the fibers. Now, I'm going to show you the difference. Mind you, this is going slow. See how rough that is? It has its application. For one thing, it's anybody can pick it up and turn something on the lathe immediately. You're just going to end up doing a lot more sanding. You can imagine if I started sanding this versus this, you're going to be starting here with 80 grit. And you have to factor in that you're going to change your shape because of how much material you're going to have to erode with the sandpaper in order to get down into some smooth surface. Hold the tool comfortably. Um, I'm, I'm right here in that fat spot of the tool. It's just where I find it comfortable. But Richard Raffin once told me, don't squeeze it tightly. You want to be able to feel what the tool is doing. And the harder you grip, the less you're going to be able to do that. This hand is just helping. The, your leverage is created by having the tool rest close to the wood. Okay, if you think about a, a, a lever or a lever, this is the fulcrum, there's the load. Have I got that right? Well, I know this is a fulcrum. That's the load, and this is whatever you call it out here. I can't even remember. But I've got lots of leverage, so that's going to give me a fair bit of confidence in the process. This, this opposite hand is just kind of securing the tool to the tool rest and acting as a little bit of a guide for me. Find that bevel, and then remember you're going to use the bottom at least uh, no more than the bottom half. Get down to the bottom third, you're going to be even better. And just, I'm, I'm uh, lifting it up and rotating it ever so slightly until I start to engage. Now, the biggest problem people have when they first start is they're watching the tool right where it interacts with the wood. But you have to be looking back here on the top to watch your profile so that you know where you're cutting. If you're watching down here, it's almost impossible to do that. All right, let's give it a little speed. Remember, it's all about rim speed. So the larger the diameter, the faster the rim or the outside diameter of the tool, the wood is going to be passing the edge of the tool. So on small diameter work, you've got to increase the RPM so that you've got more wood going by the chisel tip. And you have to practice going both ways. You're going to find that you're really comfortable in one direction and not so in the other. Now, there are times when you use the tip. So if I'm going to go in here and make a bead. I'm going to cut a little bit of a relief. And then I'm going to come in here. And this is where it gets a little tricky, but you've got to learn to turn that fast enough to create that bead. And that's where it's really critical that you watch what's going on up here. Cut another one, just glue with a little relief cut first, and you can actually use the tip as well if you want. Same idea. Get the bevel of the tool engaged in the wood. And then just use that tip but you really have to, it's not a very good bead, you really have to uh, rotate, rotate this way a lot faster than you're moving horizontally. It takes a little getting used to. A 
The advantage of cutting beads, I think, with a skew chisel is you can get them so much tighter. If you're using an, uh, any other tool, even a gouge, you can't quite get that nice, clean, tight bead. It's really nice if you can get these to the point where you don't have to do any sanding. A lot of folks are picking up turning as a hobby, but they're not taking the time to learn the shearing tools. They're just scraping. And I think you're missing a lot of the fun and the craftsmanship involved in turning if you're not shearing. Another thing to practice would be just cutting a shoulder, a round shoulder, so it's just half a bead. Remember to keep your eye on the top. Now, that may be difficult at the beginning because you don't know where your tool is. So you actually have to get to a point where you can learn, you feel where the, when the tool engages, or that bevel engages the wood. And that allows you to lift your eye and look up at the top so you can watch the profile as it's... And occasionally you'll get it caught a little above half and you'll know because it'll, it'll wake you up. If it's sharp, you're producing shavings, not dust. And it's far easier to cut. And of course, the finish is going to be so much better. So when any of that changes, then you know it's time to go back and resharpen or rehome. Now, typically you don't use a gouge, a pardon me, a a skew chisel for doing an inside curve, but you can get away with a little bit. I like it because it gives you such a smooth surface. Size of the, the size of the skew is going to determine in a large measure the radius that you're able to, you're able to do. This would be better saved for a gouge, but if it's in hand, use it. So beads, some coves, flats, tapers, skew chisel, I think is going to be your best choice. It's going to give you the best finish. And you can remove a lot of wood quickly. Pick up a three-quarter half, pardon me, a three-quarter or one inch. That's what I like. Um, any of the brand names, Sorby, uh, Henry Taylor, I know Craft Supplies in the Utah has their own in-house brand that are, that are extremely good chisels as well. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.